everybody, I'm Hanna Pro Jason and today I'm with Jeff Proctor. How are you brother? I'm doing great. Thanks. Awesome. He is the chief principal and driver of this bad boy, the Honda Ridgeline Baja. Now you guys might remember this because I showed you guys this at SEMA, but it's not the same vehicle we saw at SEMA, was it a couple years back when they unveiled it? It actually is the same it's truck. Really? Yep. Yep. This is crazy. So tell me a little bit about this. Like, where, where, where do you race this vehicle? Uh, we race in the western United States uh, in some BLM land and then most importantly we, we race in Mexico. So Baja 1000 and Baja 500. And this has won some championships. It has, it has. Uh, you know, we've been fortunate to uh, be on a roll this season. We've got uh, three wins under our belt. Baja 500 in June and most recently uh, Vegas to Reno. Uh, from Las Vegas to Reno, we won that race as well. That is insane. Now a lot of what I learned about it that really impresses me is the power plant. What engine is in this vehicle? Yeah, great question. So we actually start with a base block that comes out of a Honda Pilot, a Honda Ridgeline. It's a 3.5 liter V6. Then uh, HPD takes a hold of it and they turn it into a, an endurance uh, racing engine. Uh, it's primarily found in endurance sports car racing. The Ac Acura DPI uh, race car uses it. The former TLX race car uses it. And of course, we do as well. A couple of the tweaks that HPD puts on it, it's a twin turbo V6. Ah, I'm liking that. So it's a fire breather. Cool. Uh, approximate horsepower? Uh, I mean, I know it doesn't really matter for the racing you're doing, but... Yeah, I think it depends on who you're talking to. We really shouldn't be talking about it, but uh, 550. Okay, so let's just say about 550. Or more. <laughs> That's a lot more. And then it's attached to a sequential six gear transmission, right? That's correct. So we have an Alvin six speed sequential. Uh, it has a torque converter, so we don't have a clutch. Okay. And basically we two foot drive it. So we- You told me that, that's crazy. We left foot brake and that's how we steer this thing around the course. Well, show me around the vehicle a little bit. So this is all, this is all made out of what? This is obviously not- Yeah, so it's a, it's a fiber class body. It okay. has all the body lines no, 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 of show, the show actual factory, factory ridge line. Okay. Uh, fiberglass body, and there's a lot of carbon fiber parts as well to kind of keep the weight down. Makes sense. Uh, most importantly up here in the, in the front quarter here, we're running 24 inches of, of wheel travel. So our shocks can extend 24 inches. It allows us to kind of go through the big whoops. For those of you that don't know what whoops are. Yeah, so I didn't know what a whoop was. He goes, oh yeah, this goes through the big whoops with 24 inches of the travel here and 30 inches of the travel there. I'm like, what's a whoop? And everyone's like, what do you mean, what's a whoop? I'm, what's a whoop? So picture this, out in the desert of, of, of Baja, Mexico, here in the Western United States, we have bumps in our desert that are about three foot to four foot deep. So picture four foot deep up, four foot deep down into a crevice. And there's sections of Mexico that will race maybe a 50 mile section through San Felipe where this truck will be skipping across the top and our, our suspension will be doing all of the work. And that's what these incredible vehicles are designed to do. God, that is so awesome. What size wheels and tires are these? Yeah, great. So we're running KMC beadlock wheels specifically for off-road to okay. keep the, the tire from coming off the wheel. And we're running a 37 inch general uh, grabber. These things hook up so well for us, give us great traction in the sand washes. Okay, now you were just talking when I got in here on how many tires you bring to an event. So how many tires do you bring? Not how many do you use, but how many do you bring to the event? Yeah, it's a good About. question. So, uh, you know, we're preparing right now for the Baja 1000 coming up here in November, and uh, we're planning to take anywhere from, I'd say, 28 to 35 sets of wheels and tires. Um, we'll pit approximately every 180 to 200 miles during the race. Okay. And that's about the point where we've exhausted our rear tires. And so we'll come in, we'll get 70 gallons of fuel, and we'll get rear tires uh, replaced. So you replace your tires because you wear them out every 180 miles approximately. That's correct. <laughs> That's insane. Like, God, these things are massive. That is simply awesome. So inside, it was, it was funny, a minute, right before we started this, he said, you want to see the inside? I'm like, yeah, how does the door open? He goes, door open? You climb through the window. <laughs> you literally watch it. You literally step up here. And then you climb, I'm assuming you don't climb this way, right? You climb in like what, like this way? Yeah, one foot forward. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And then this way. And then you just kind of slide in like this? Exactly. <laughs> this is comfortable. It's this very is comfortable. Really nice. Well, when, you, when you're speaking of comfortability, you know, a driver could be behind the wheel anywhere from seven to nine hours and maybe even longer during a race. So okay. you really need to be comfortable and focused. 
we're gonna start this bad boy up. Let's do it. What do you okay, think? Okay, so first thing first is you wanna prime the uh, oil pressure. So okay. let's just push start without having the fuel pumps engaged. So push start and hold it, and you wanna hear the engine just crank until we have oil PSI at around 20. Okay, uh, push ignition and fuel pump one. This is probably the coolest thing I've ever done. All right, you're ready for takeoff. Uh, make sure we're in neutral. Yes, we're in neutral. We're in neutral. Okay, uh, just in case, uh, left foot on the brake. <laughs> okay. okay. The and brake then, is rock hard. Yes, it's very sensitive. Oh my God, oh wow, I can't, I'm, okay. So when you're driving for seven to nine hours, you want very little input. Makes sense. Um, okay, so then now you're just gonna push start again and crank it until it starts. It's a cold start, so it might take a few cranks. That was pretty insane. And obviously there's no glass or windshield or anything. So do you, you have goggles on and a helmet? Is that yeah, kind so, of what so, you wear? Yep, good question. We have a full face, uh, full face helmet on. Okay. Um, and instead of having a windshield that we have to clean, we only clean our, gui our, our visors. Makes perfect um, sense. And then we have uh, fresh air that's pumped into our helmets at all times. Mm -hmm. So that keeps the, the shield from fogging up. And then what's in the back? Tell me a little bit about what's in the back of the truck. Yeah, yeah back of the truck, we've got uh, a 70 gallon fuel cell. Uh, that is going to last us for about 200 miles. All of our trans coolers are back there. We have a carbon fiber wing that kind of captures all the wind for that. Basically, all of our spares back there. So we have two spare full sets of uh, spare tires in case we get a puncture out on the course. Uh, we have tool bags, and then we have redundancy of parts. If we lose an alternator, we have a spare alternator back there. Spare uh, steering servo. We have spare redundancy of everything. The whole idea is when you're out in the middle of Mexico, sure. you want to be able to have the parts available to make an infield repair. Not only sense. is the navigator a skilled navigator, but he's also the most capable mechanic on the team. So he'll help me do all the repairs in field if we need to. That's awesome. Hey, I really appreciate your time. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit. I learned a ton about this. I'll definitely be watching you guys. You said November? Yep, When's November 16th. November 16th, I'll be watching. Jeff, thank you. Thanks, Jason. And guys, as always, this time from somewhere in California, I'm the Honda Pro, and now you're in the know.